Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We'll be solving math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Review 13th Edition Official Guide. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. In this book, you will find 230 problem solving questions and 174 data sufficiency questions. The solutions to all of these problems is something that we have already done, that I have already done. You will find the solutions to all of the 230 problem solving questions and all of the 174 data sufficiency questions at my channel. Just look for day 1 through 250. Starting today, on day number 251, we're going to redo this problem at a little bit of a faster pace. Okay, let's get going. Problem number one on page number 152. We are on page number 152. Please turn to it. Problem number one. This is something that we did on day number one. Here is what we are told. We are told that the fiscal budget, fiscal budget was $12,600. We are told that the amount that was spent by the end by the end of the fourth month was four thousand five hundred and eighty dollars. So our budget was twelve thousand six hundred dollars. It turned out that by the end of the fourth year we have already spent this much money. The question simply is how much are we running over the budget? It's very straightforward, very simple. What we do is we take the 12,600. Now listen, don't try to divide 12,600 by 12 and find out the monthly amount and then multiply it by 4 and then do the... You're going round and round and round. Ask yourself, how many 4 months period are there in a year? A year is made up of 12 months obviously. So there are 3, there are 3 4 months period. 4 times 3 is 12. So just divide this amount by 3. If we divide this amount by 3, then the amount that we'll get here is the amount that we had budgeted for the first four months. Let's do it. 12 divided by 3 is 4 and 6 divided by 3 is 2 so it's $4,200 is what we had budgeted. It turns out that it turns out that we actually ended, ended up spending $4,580. Therefore the question is how much more did we spend than what we were supposed to? The answer is very straightforward. We are $380. We are $380 over the budget. That's all. Let's do the next one shall we? We are $380 over the budget. Number two. What value of n? What value of n will make hundred plus n over n not an integer? What value of n will make this quantity not an integer is a bloody awkward way of saying n plus a, 100 plus n is not divisible by which of these following values of n. Let's find out. It has to be evenly divisible because if it's evenly divisible then it's going to be an integer. If it's not, it's, it's not an integer. So let's start then. Very simple. 101 if n happens to be 1. 101 over 1. 100, 100 plus 1 divided by 1 is just 101 over 1. Of course that is an integer. That is an integer. 100 plus 2 over 2 is just 102 over 2. 102 is an even number and of course we can divide even number by 2 but that's what even number means. If you divide this one it's going to be an integer. It's just going to be 51. Let's move on to the third one. 103 is going to be 100. 100 plus 3 over 3 is going to be 103 over 3. And is 103 divisible, evenly divisible by 3? The answer is no. Because how do we know? How do we, how do we know if a number is divisible by 3? How do we know if a number is divisible by 3? If the sum of the digits, if the sum of the digits, if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, then the number itself is divisible by 3. Here, as you can clearly see, 1 plus 3 is 4. The sum of the digits of this number is 4. 4 is not divisible by 3. 103 is not going to be divisible by 3. That's the one that is not an integer. This is not, not an integer. And that's our answer. 100, 103 divided by 3. And that's answer choice C. 
What will we get if we divide 103 by 3? Do you know? Let's find out, shall we? 103 divided by 3, how do we find out? How many 3's in a 10? Well, how many 3's in a 1? 1 has no 3. That 1 goes and joins the 0 becomes a 10. How many 3's in a 10? 10 has 3 3's. The remaining 1 goes and joins the 3 becomes 13. How many 1's in a 13? 13 has 4 3. 4 3's are 12. 4 3's are 12. And we have a remainder of 1. You see, it's not, a, it's not an integer. If we divide it, what we'll end up is a 34 and a 34 and a third. Let's move on then, number 3. Of course, this part was not necessary for the exam. We just did it out of curiosity. Just for learning purposes. We'll do a lot of extra work in these in this, uh, videos that is not required to solve the problem in the exam. We do it for the learning purposes. Number 3. Number 3 is also we did something that we did on day number 1. We have two rectangular regions, we are told. Two rectangular floors, we are told, have the same, the same areas. One rectangular floor has the dimensions of 12 by 12 by 18, and the other one has 9 by some unknown quantity, unknown length. And the question is, how much is that length if the area of the two rectangles happens to be equal? Well, it's pretty straightforward. We have this quantity here, 12 by 12 times 18, and here we have 9 times L, L for the length here. Let's divide both sides by 9. If we divide both sides by 9, this 9 is going to drop out and 18 becomes 2. There you go. L equals 2 times 12, 24. The length of the second rectangle must be 24. Let's move on then. Number 4. Yes, I know, I'm a baby. I need a break every, every, after every problem. After every problem, must have a sip. Here we go, number four. We have a case which we are told contains C cartons. Each carton we are told, each carton we are told has B boxes. Each box we are told, each box we are told has 100 clips. The question is, how many clips? How many clips in two cases? How many clips in two cases? Now listen, there are two ways we can go about solving this problem. One is the classical way, the traditional way, the orthodox way, the conventional way, the, the academic way, the algebraic way. The reason it's called algebraic way is you just, just do it with the algebra. The other one is a non-traditional, unorthodox, non-classical way where you make up numbers for the variable and that technique is called plugging in. We can do it either way that you want. If it makes it easy for you, if it makes it easier for you to deal with the solid numbers so that we have some concrete number to work with, you can make up numbers for the variables. You can plug in values. Let's pretend the C is equal to 4. So we are pretending that each carton has, each, each, each case contains 4 cartons. Each carton has B boxes. Let's give it a value. Let's pretend it's 5. Now the question is very straightforward. The question is very straightforward. The question is, if each box has 100 clips, each box has 100 clips, and, and each carton contains B boxes, so each, each carton will have 100 times 5, Boxes in it, 100 times 5, 5 box, each carton has 5 boxes, each box has 100 clips, so that's 500 so far. And then we have each case contains C cartons, so that's times 4. And of course we have two of them. We have two of them. There you go, there's your answer. Now all we have to do is multiply this uh, quantity out, and then go to the answer choices. Each of the answer choices, wherever you see, wherever you see C, replace it with 4. Wherever we see 5, replace it, or wherever we see B, replace it with 5 until you get the answer that you're looking for. The answer that we're looking for is 5 times 4 is 20, 20 plus 2 is 40, 40 plus 100 is 4000. That's our answer. That's our punchline. And the answer choice that gives you the 4000 is your answer. That's one way. Or we could simply do it with the algebra, just like we did before. Each, each box has 100 clips, and each carton has B boxes. And each, each carton has B boxes and each case contains C cartons. And we have two of those cartons. 
there you go, there's your answer. 2 times 100, 200 times BC. 200 times BC is the answer. And that's going to be answer choice C. Answer choice C. Let's go on to the next one. Number 5. Number 5. In number five, number four and number five is something that we did on day number three. This is something that we did on day number three. If you want to watch the original solution from day number three, you'll find number four and number five. We, we are told that uh, the, we are looking for the sum of prime numbers. We are looking for sum of prime numbers. Greater greater than 60 but less than 70 well it's very straightforward very simple let's just make a list of uh, all the odd numbers from 60 to uh, 60 through 70 because if it's a prime number it's got to be an odd number to begin with and no even number can be a prime number the only exception of course is 2 so there is no point in looking at even numbers we're just going to make a list of all the odd numbers 61 63 61 63, 65, 67, and 69. And then cross out the ones that are not prime numbers. As you can clearly see, 63 is not a prime number because you can divide 63 by 3. This will be 2 and 1, 21. This, this is not a prime number. 65 is not a prime number because anything that ends in a 5 or a 0 is clearly divisible by 5. 65 is not a prime number. What else can we cross out? 69 is another one. That is also divisible by 3. That's not a prime number. These two are prime numbers, 61 plus 67, 61 plus 67, 1 plus 7 is 8, and 6 plus 6 is 12, so we have 128 is the answer. The sum of the prime numbers between 60 and 70, greater than 60 and less than 70, the sum of all the prime numbers, turns out that when we say sum of all the prime numbers, it turns out that there are only two of them. And the sum of those two numbers happens to be 128, and that's our answer. That's answer choice B. That was it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.